Hi, I'm Roger Overby. Welcome to Community Focus, and we have a special guest tonight, Mr. Julius Anderson, the Vice President of Muncie City Council. How are you doing? I'm doing great. It's a pleasure to be here, Roger. Yeah, you finally made it to the show. I've been trying yeah. to get you on for a while, but you've been a busy man. Yeah, that I have been. You was president for a while, mm -hmm. the year before last, I think, wasn't it? Right. And, and you was vice president before. You've been vice president, what, three years? Yeah, three years and uh, president, president one right. year. Good, good, good for you. Okay. And you've been on the council five? Five, five years. years. Mm -hmm. I'm about five and a half years, yes. Um, I take it you like it. I love it. <laughs> yeah. What do you love about it? Well, I, I, I like the fact that, you know, being in Muncie, um, especially dealing with our elderly and senior people, I like making people happy. But I'm a servant by nature, so I like to serve. I have always been in a serving type of uh, atmosphere, uh, from scout growing up to where I'm at now. I have always serving. Serving and volunteering is perhaps one of the biggest things that anyone can get into, especially if you like it, like me, do a good job. So I love serving. Well, I see you out in the community a lot, mm -hmm. doing yeah. things, and uh, for the last three years since I've been uh, mm -hmm. with the city, this time uh, on Black History Month, you've been at the uh, moderator at the churches, those community mm -hmm. meetings. So, uh, yeah, you, you like getting out there, don't yeah. you? Yeah, I, I do. And let me just expound on that just a moment or two. Um, uh, during my, my time uh, on the city council, uh, my constituents was coming to me and complained, but they never had time to go up to the mayor's office. You know, he has that five minutes with the mayor, that chat, which I think is excellent. Mm -hmm. But uh, this gave me an opportunity to come up with some ideas as it related to that of uh, bringing people together uh, to talk with the mayor, and not only the mayor, but his administrative staff. Mm -hmm. So by visiting the, the African American Ministries on, on uh, every Tuesday of the month of uh, February gave them a chance to come my district and if you don't not even in the district to come and and to, to begin to ask some questions let's talk about those blind homes let's talk about your trash let's talk about the, the animal and I I must admit the mayor and his administrative team have been there every time and we have gotten excellent service out of them and this has been, really been a, a building up of Muncie because they get a chance to see the leadership at first hand and watch it. And you can ask the questions and the mayor say, hey, look, I'll take care of that tomorrow. And or, dude, we'll be over there tomorrow to check out that street or that hole or that sidewalk or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it's been really good. And uh, Roger, you've been there as well. So, uh, and filming all of them, I got to say uh, that for the last three years and visiting a different ministry, at that particular time has been part excellence and um, I just want to say kudos to not only the mayor but his administrative team because all of them have been there every single time we have met so it's been good. Um, yeah there's a lot of meetings that uh, you know we go to and, and uh, you got the people that can answer the questions right there at, um, and get the service from <laughs> straight on, you don't have to yeah. call somebody. So, yeah, and you know, the mayor has left that open to uh, people. Hey, if you have a neighborhood association meeting and you need some of my department heads there to answer questions, or uh, you know, uh, they'll be there. Exactly right, and, and that is true. I I can tell you just from, for instance, over in the Whiteley Neighborhood Association and or that of the Industrial Neighborhood Association. Uh, every now and then we have, we want to hear something about streets. Duke Campbell shows up. He mm -hmm. talks about it. They say, hey, look, this is the streets in which we have that we're going to take care of. And, um, and I think the people, once they get there and hear what he has to say as it relates to their streets, they can visually not only see it, but they're hearing it from the horse's mouth. Right. So he's the top administrator in that area. So they... And the same thing with the police chief. Exactly. Chief. Chief Stewart uh, has been to a lot of meetings mm -hmm. and talked to people, and, and that's good because mm -hmm. that's where you get a lot of your questions and problems is, mm -hmm. you know, uh, some kind of crime or mm -hmm. do we need patrols or whatever, so mm -hmm. that's good. So what else do you like about it? Uh, you, uh, There's been a lot of things happening here in the last few years in, right. in the city, and the uh, city council has a lot to do with that. Yeah. 
Well, you know, Roger. You're, you're writing the checks. Yeah. <laughs> you, you guys know, are writing the checks. Yeah, we are. Uh, there's a lot that goes on behind the scene, uh, but uh, you can't take anything away from uh, that of the, uh, the teamwork. I mean, the respect for one another from all the council members uh, and working together to make Muncie a better place to live. You know, that of the, the mayor keeps talking about the quality of life. And, um, and you can just see that. You can see how passionate he is as it relates to wanting to get things done, seeing things happen, and make things happen. He, uh, not only he, but he makes his whole team transparent. I mean, it seems like everybody's on the same page as it relates to getting things done. So, uh, not only kudos goes to him and his administrative team, but uh, you can see it, the direction in which we slowly turning. It's like a ship, Roger. You know, I've spent a little time in the Navy. And you don't turn a ship on a dime. It mm -hmm. takes a long, a little while before it can get to where you want to go. But it constantly moves. And when you go down to the downtown area, and or you go down to South Madison, and or you look in some of the neighborhoods, you can see for yourself the work that's being done, see contractors on site, and you can see a difference. This is beginning to take a shape. And uh, with his vision and leadership, man, Muncie is on the move. There's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. I mean, you know, you see it, you hear it. Mm -hmm. I know people sometimes get aggravated when they go yeah. downtown and say, all that street's closed right now. And mm -hmm. being on the board of works, I get a heads up that this is right. happening. But I still run into it sometimes. Yeah. And, uh, but, you know, uh, I'm used to that, being on the road and mm -hmm. paving roads for years, but um, it's good that things are getting done. It really is. And there's a lot going on. The whole uh, sky uh, scape of Muncie, the, the streetscape, the skyscape is changing. Yeah, it Changing is. for the good. Mm -hmm. And, you know, business is going to come, you know, mm -hmm. as soon as the hotel gets up and running, uh, business uh, gonna come. We, we're hoping that business come down South Madison Street uh, after we finish that project all the way down. You know, Muncie is basically on the move again. Mm -hmm. There's life, there's a pulse there, and the people are getting excited about Muncie. And uh, I, must ad I must admit, I am really proud to be a part of what's going on, and I'm in the mix of it right now. You and are. I'm sure the other council members feel the same because we back there are helping and as it relates to doing the ordinances and signing the papers and getting, making sure that the finances and all of that works together. We're, we're working together as a team and it's happening. It's happening. You can visually see what's going on in Muncie. Mm -hmm. Beautiful Muncie, that is. Yeah, happy Muncie. Happy Muncie. <laughs> oh, by the way, I, I saw you trying to dance on that. Uh, no, you didn't see me. Was that what you were trying to dance? I, I wasn't. My, no, no, no. That was his administrative team. Somebody had to film it. I had to film it. Ah! They, they wanted me to get behind the camera and dance around. I was just too busy for Oh, me. man. Oh, that, yeah. that was a fun thing. That was a great, great. Sarah Beach's idea. Uh -huh. I'll give her credit. She, that was her idea. And she, I, I told her, I said, you got to go run around with me and help me get... Because some of the people on there, we didn't even know. We just... You know, she'd get them fired up to dance around, yeah. hold her cell phone out, and yeah. have the music playing. But it yeah. worked out pretty good. Oh, yeah. A lot, of, a lot of players on there. Oh, yeah. The last ones on there was the mayor's grandsons. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we had yeah. fun with that. Yeah. Now, you mentioned you was in the Navy. Tell us about that. Oh, well, you know, I um, after high school, I uh, worked at the, uh, went to Area Career Center, was at one of their programs at that particular time. They had, like, an orderly program, three, three uh, weeks at the um, Area Career Center, then three weeks at the nursing home. Then three weeks at the hospital, then back, and just kept on revolving. Uh, after that was over with, um, I went. I decided to go in and listen to the United States Navy. Um, went in the Navy and what year was that? That was back in seventy five, seventy six. Really? Yeah, and I ended up doing four years. But I, while I was on active duty, I signed up for the reserves, and I ended up staying another sixteen years without missing anything. Just Is that right? Went straight through and retired and. Um, Good for you. It was it's really good, really good experience, and uh, well, thank you for your service. Well, thank you, Roger. You know, uh, I'm really proud to be uh, 
uh, American uh, soldier, so to speak. I still uh, shape up when I hear anchors away and <laughs> that uniform and pulling in and out of porches, bring back a lot of great memories, gave me a chance to see the world. And um, it's, it's really, really, and I think that if you want to, I think that everybody should, uh, whether you want to or not, I know some people have to, but it was a relief for me, so I can't speak for everyone, but for me it was great, great. Well, what did you do? Well, you know, I learned how to become an electrician. I was an electrician's mate. Mm. And um, one of my jobs were down in the engine rooms. That's why sometimes I talk real loud because it's always noisy. Uh, I learned how to parallel split generators and doing general quarters. One thing I became good at is working generators. And then it gave me the idea with theory, all of that, work on gyros, all electrical power distribution centers and all of that. and. Um, just anything electrical, you know, because when you're out to the middle of the sea, man, you either learn or burn. You <laughs> have to do something. So, that's a big sea out there. That's a big sea out there. <laughs> so uh, it, it was really good to me. It gave me a skilled trade in which I'm still using today. And here's a plug for the Navy. Over 75% of our jobs are skilled trades. Uh -huh. So uh, uh, you go in the Navy, you're going to learn how to be a boatswain. Uh, well, boat you're going to learn how to be that of an electrician, plumber, welder. Uh, air traffic controller, you name it, electronic technician, computer technician, I mean, they all like that. So, and with this high-tech Navy, computers and all of that, man, I mean, and if you're a young person out there and you're looking for something to do after high school, join one of the armed forces. The Air Force is probably the same way, Army is the same way, those Marines the same way too. So, <laughs> they all work together. I don't forget your Army, but they all <laughs> work the same way. And that is to help you if you can't decide. Can those cars? Hmm? Yeah. Coast Guard. Coast Guard, yeah. Yeah, that's good. So, it was really good. I don't want to forget those Coast Guard no, guys. I don't want to forget they, them. Yeah, because they, they out there patrolling the coastal areas as well. And there's a lot of patrolling that goes on now. Dave. Oh, yeah. But, well, that's good. And now you are you're a master electrician? Yeah. I, um, I, I got out of the Navy. And the Navy, it teaches you uh, just the, the, the industrial type. You know, you're working with a lot of motors and stuff because we had to put our own bearings on. We had to rewind our motors and do all that kind of stuff while we was out to sea. And we had baking them, dipping them and all of that. But um, I, I knew just that of the, uh, the, the industrial part. When I came outside, there was a commercial and a residential part I didn't pick up. So I went back to school and, 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 and to learn that the residential along with uh, the uh, commercial and taking my test and became a, a master electrician for a while there, for 10 years, I was going pretty pretty hard and heavy at it. Um, wiring houses and doing all that. So it gave me a great foundation, an excellent foundation uh, for me and for any anyone else. Uh, basically, when you get a, a military person who have went through some of the school and training, man, they, they'll make you a fine employee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, what, what are you wanting to see, uh, you know, you're, Tell us about your district. Okay. Uh, you got District 6, yeah. I believe it is. Yeah. District 6. Um, you know, um, you know, District 6 is a, is a very special district. You know, um, Roger, which you may or may not know, I did eight years on the school board. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, um, I served on the school board, and, and uh, that was very, it was a very good challenge for me. You know, because here the guy like me was really basically getting on teachers' nerves, and then I somehow managed to get myself on the Muncie community. But it was one of the most uh, um, best decisions I made in running, and um, and it was a great honor because even at that serving in uh, the capacity in which I did learning. Uh, about our children in our school and administration and, and, and how things work. I mean, it's, it's I, I have to compliment the teachers nowadays because they have to put up with a lot, but they're really concerned about that of our children. And for the most part of it, you know, our kids are there to learn and the teachers are there to teach. And when you put them two together, you know, boom, great things happen. So, so how long was you on the school board? Eight years. Really? Yeah. Eight years. Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, so I, you know, I have, you know, since since I got out of the, the military uh, in 1980, off of active duty, 
man, 10 years scouting, uh, spent time with that of the Habitat for Humanity, served with them for a long time. Um, then I went straight to the Muncie Community School Board for eight years. After that, I went back into my community working in the neighborhood association. So I've been working with this neighborhood association for years, cleanups and doing all of that. I've just always been a busy person as it relates to that because I'm living in an environment, man, I want to make sure it's, it's, it's great. So what's unique about the 6th District? The 6th District is unique is because of the fact that um, not only I live there and you live there, but it has so much to offer on the positive side. But on the, on the negative side, I, I do see some things that perhaps maybe we need to, to try and see how we can get things back. And Roger, what I'm talking about, and you know as well, you see we just lost our K-Mark, mm -hmm. you know. And then and our marsh, and our right marsh, that. right? So I feel that um, uh, the way things are going right now, uh, there there is a plant fitness is in the... Uh, the, uh, the old marsh, and I, I think we all can use a little exercise, and that's a good thing. I don't remember that. Are you? Yeah. Okay, good. I, I, my wife and I have been talking about joining that, but... It's a nice place. Yeah. Uh, I miss my grocery store, but... <laughs> yeah, but um, what about Kmart? Now, I, I heard the building is still empty. Um, uh, I'm hearing that uh, maybe we can get a Kroger or something in there. And That'd be nice. Here. Well, you know, I, I did hear that rumor from somebody, some a couple months ago, but it'd be so nice if we could get another store there, a grocery mm -hmm. store, because everybody on this side of the tracks, they got to go at least down to Walnut or farther down to go to a grocery store. And sometimes, you know, in the middle of the night, on winter night, it's like, mm -hmm. I don't want to go that far, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> or, you know, and sometimes even in the day. So it'd be nice if we could get another store there. Mm -hmm. If you can help make that happen, that'd be great. I would love to make that happen. And you know, another great thing about my, uh, my district is the fact that, man, I'm a part of the Whiteley Neighborhood Association and the Industrial Neighborhood Association, uh, all shires, and then the Blame area as well. It's just a few. So we are really doing a great job. And, and, and I mean it, you know, uh, things are really just, just coming to life and people from all over the city is coming and checking us out uh, as we continue to move forward in our neighborhood association. So that goes right along with the fact that did you remember? You remember that old budget inn, mm -hmm. um, quality inn hotel? Yeah, that you know, eyesore. Uh, <laughs> yes, it was an eyesore, and it sat there abandoned for so long, and then it got infested with the wrong things. But I believe now with the uh, the building commissioner and the mayor. And, and, and the rest of the, the, the department heads, that thing is coming down, and I like to see something positive go over that little area. That'd be nice. Yeah. Be so, nice. Um, uh, there's some great things. And as I look at the Morningside edition out there, I'm, 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 I'm learning more and more about it. I, I, I have attended at least one or two of those meetings over there. It so happened that they've been following on the same night I have another meeting, but I think they up and running over there, and I think you're part of that. Neighborhood Association, aren't you? I, I go to it sometimes, sometimes. Well, I can. Okay. Well, I... Uh, There's a lot of times those nights are scheduled for me to go mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. film something, but mm -hmm. uh, when I can, I go to them, yeah. Well, they're up and coming, and, and, and we have to uh, give our kudos to those like, for instance, Bob York and, and uh, the rest of them over there that's a part of that Neighborhood Association of Presidents uh, are just trying to get things done throughout our city. So uh, MAPIS is really working hard to try and see how bringing all the neighborhoods together. And it's been just a great thing for, for Wiley. So I, I just take my hats off to our president, uh, Frank Scott, and, and for those over in the Wiley neighborhood. And then industry too, you know, they, they're doing a great job over there. So that we find out that's the key of getting rid of those drug-infested uh, homes and, and blight and all of that because people want a better quality of life and that's what it's all about it is and you know unfortunately in some of the neighborhoods i i originally grew up way out in the country and, oh yeah yeah on a farm oh. so coming to muncie uh, and i i moved actually said my address in muncie was been since 1985 i was living in oklahoma 
and I came back to Indiana and I mo actually moved to Muncie in 1985. And the thing about Muncie is in some of the neighborhoods like uh, you just mentioned, some of the older, the people have been around for a while back in the, the other days, <laughs> mm -hmm. have passed on or moved out and you know some of these homes become rentals mm -hmm. and you get you know different people moving in and out and you know some of them well you know you have it in a lot of the neighborhoods you get some uh, drug problems and you get some of these things like that now the good thing is now the uh, the drug task force or Muncie narcotics unit I think it's called now they work very hard. I, I see them all the time, and and they've been making a lot of bust. And you know, but in Muncie, like other communities, not Muncie's not alone, has drug problems. And um, where I came from, a little uh, over in Randolph County, mm -hmm. they have had heroin problems over wow. there for years. Mm -hmm. And 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 now we, we have it over here and meth, mm -hmm. meth. It, the problem with meth, meth is some of the uh, uh, Muncie drug uh, officers has told me, you know, there's no middleman. You you get the stuff, and, and people make it, and they sell it, and they use it, and all this. And I know right now the prosecutor and, and other people and legislators are trying to fix that to where it's harder to do, which would be a good thing because then you won't have all these little meth labs everywhere. Mm -hmm. But that's that's the problem. But I gotta say, uh, Muncie Police Department. Some of the guys I've worked with on the county, they're out there working that, and they're making drug busts all the time, and they're constantly. At it, unfortunately, I mean, it just don't go away. But that is, you know, they're they're getting into the neighborhoods now. There's been several drug busts here in Morningside ah. that they have being involved in and taking care of those problems and that's a good thing and uh, we just it don't end but hopefully uh, one of these days they'll get it slowed down mm -hmm. and that's going to be done by legislation mm -hmm. but uh, I remember when I was a young guy in my 20s and was doing drug arrest and things and I was thinking I'm going to change things and you know it's so frustrating because you bust one guy mm -hmm. and two or three more just pop back up in their place. Mm -hmm. It's like that weasel game where the heads pop up. Right. But um, they're doing the best they can. They are. Roger, you know, back when I was on the school board, you know, we had Just Say No and all of those various little slogans. But do you, what do you think is the best way to, to to teach our kids about that? Is it, is it training? Do you think they should be trained in school or talked about in school? Because right nowadays, man, it's even in our schools. I know. I mean... You know, when I was going to school, I well, I remember, I think I was a freshman, in, our, in health class. Right. And, and in our health books, it was talking about drugs. Yes. And it was talking about heroin and things like this, and people were so desperate right. that they mm -hmm. would pimp their wives out to get money to buy drugs and, and, and this now I'm thinking oh man that must be in California surely it's not mm -hmm. around here and at that time we're talking late 60s early mm -hmm. 70s it really wasn't so much I, I don't remember drugs being an issue in school until I was a senior and people were selling marijuana mm -hmm. and the dogs would come in and sniff the right. lockers, the lockers that. yeah that's right mm -hmm. but it has got bad and not just Muncie all over it's right. bad and I don't know the answer mm -hmm. I wish you could say I, I know people's tried dare yes you know and I and I I don't know I wish I knew the answer because mm -hmm. drugs is broken up and hurt more families yes than anything I know right right anything I know and it I've had judges and prosecutors sitting in the seat you're sitting in and tell you 90% of the criminal element, the crime, is because of drugs and alcohol, which alcohol is a drug, because of drugs. Domestic violence, people get drunk, they get high, messed up, they fight. You know, it happens sometimes when they don't, but most of it. 
thieves, you know, people being thieves and stealing to support their habits, etc., etc. It's drugs. Right. It's drugs. That's why our prisons are full. Yeah. There's too much money in drugs. And, and you know, I'm not smart enough to know how to do it, but you know, we need a comprehensive plan to try the best we can to get the drugs out of our neighborhoods the best we can and away from the kids. Yeah, so uh, that's, that's what I was saying. So it, it has to be somewhat of education and we as parents, we have to, but we all have to work together oh, in order to do that. Or we, it's not going to be the police. Yes. It's not going to be mm -hmm. the parents. It's not going to be the judges. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be the teachers. It's going to have to be everybody. You're yeah. right. It's going to have to be a, a consortium of mm -hmm. a whole bunch of people working mm -hmm. to do this. Yes. And if, if we can ever get it done, it'd be a beautiful thing. Yes. I'm on the, uh, in my neighborhood association, we have broken down into various uh, segments, and I'm, I'm in, uh, well, basically two, and, and that's dealing with safety, mm -hmm. and uh, we're working with some professors out at Ball State University, along with uh, other community leaders, such as our prosecutor and, and um, uh, the police department, uh, Detective Scaife is on there, mm -hmm. along with Marlon Strong and some others, and uh, we try to do our part as it relates to trying to stop it, do surveys, find out what can we do. You know, it's going to take all of us, Roger, and, and um, you seem to know a whole lot about it if you don't talk with the judges and all of them, especially when you mention the, the, the fact that all these crimes that an individual find himself in, you find the root of it is because of that drinking, which is a drug, and, and or some kind of marijuana or some type of uh, opiate or something. But it's, it's drug related. It's drugs. Yeah. Plain and so. simple. Addictions, mm -hmm. drugs, and, and you know, there, there's drugs that, you know, I've seen before that people get on and just makes them go mm -hmm. crazy. You know, PCP, things like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of people just simply don't do what they would, they do things they normally wouldn't do mm -hmm. because of drugs. Right. It changes their personality. It changes their wants and needs, mm -hmm. and it sometimes makes good people into very bad people. Right, right. And we just need to do what we can to get that out of the kids' hands, and right. everybody's hands, basically. Yeah, it definitely affects the family. I mean, I got family members that also uh, have have basically stepped into that somewhat, and but someone's have. coming back around. So we all have. Yeah. And, you know, it's a, it's a sad thing. Yeah. So, you uh, you have visions for your district, I see, yes. and things you want to mm -hmm. do and improve. I'm, I'm glad to see that. That's good. Roger, something you, you ask about that old Kmart. Man, I would love, I, I'll be the first one to sign uh, uh, some type of ordinance to bring some Kroger's or some type of main uh, grocery store in that place over there where the Kmart used to be. And I, I think that it would, it would be very prosperous too because it would take care of all of this area up in here. Well, you know? and you know the thing is a lot of people be leaving the uh, Planet Fitness and say, hey, I need to grab something to take home for supper. Or something, yeah. Yeah. Ah, yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, that's yeah. got to be a plus for them, yes. hopefully. Tickle. Well, you know, in, in, in your travels and research, you might mm -hmm. see if you can find that something about that. Cause right. I, I'd certainly like not have to travel yeah. across tracks and go down the gallery mm -hmm. and all that to go to the store. But. Right. So in closing, um, we're right now. Path of runway 32 over here at the airport. I hear a helicopter coming in, a black ah. hole. <laughs> but um, so um, the council is, you're, you're saying, and I'm glad to see this a lot of teamwork. Yes. And, and yes. teamwork with administration and all that. That's good to see. A lot of things are getting yeah. done. Yeah, uh, a lot of things are getting done. And, um, and uh, you know, I, we've been talking about. Uh, uh, that of District 6, but you know, I look at District 6 
And uh, I look, we got the two parks, the Heakin and McCullough Park. We have um, the White River cuts down through there. This is a very beautiful area, Roger. A very beautiful area. And then the trail cuts down through there. People walking. You, you have uh, um, a lot of life going on in, in that, that particular mm -hmm. area. Right. And then if you look out and, you know, around the Claypool area, I mean, that's in the Blaine area over there. So it's a, it's a great big area, along with this particular area right here, Morningside. So it encompasses a whole lot. There's a lot of beautiful people living in, in this area. Uh, and, and they want, they all have the same thing. They want that quality of life. And if I and, and the rest of the, uh, that of the council can do all we can, we work together. You know, I know Mr. Dishman was out here for a long time, mm -hmm. and I just happened to come in and uh, alongside of him, but um, uh, with the little parks and, and all of that, uh, if we can just continue to work together, and man, I'm telling you, we turning Muncie around. Now, again, that ship, it takes a while for it to turn, but it's turning. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I, I can't say enough about our leadership. You know, I, I say this quite often, uh, leadership is everything. And when I heard Stedman, um, Oprah's uh, friend, uh, he was here the other day, and we had to meet him over at Shefford, Shefford Chapel. Uh, uh, really good all of myself, met with him, and kind of a little private thing, and then everybody else came up, but it was good. Uh, and it came out of his mouth. Hmm. Leadership is everything. I had him repeat it because I heard my pastor say it, and, uh, and, and it is true. So with the right leadership, and I do believe we have the right leadership, that's helping and, and he has a vision to see uh, Muncie going to the next level, everybody is on board. So things are running right. We're doing what we can to make Muncie better. But still, there's a lot of things still yet to be done. Still yet to be done. But we're working together, and I believe, Roger, that we can just keep the pace that we're going at. Muncie will be something to talk about for years to come. Because we're 150 years old. We are. Mm -hmm. That's right. This, this year, mm -hmm. Sasquatch yeah. Centennial, I right. say. <laughs> So, 150 years old. Yeah. So when we get 200 years old, man, we should be doing everything right then. Yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll learn by then. Yeah. I probably won't be here. Oh, yes, you will. <laughs> but, uh, you know, this is a historic year, and there's a lot of historic things going on in Muncie. Some very exciting things. And, um, like I said, the streetscape was going to change. Right. The skyscape was going to change. And uh, when that hotel goes up, you know, when you look toward that water tower and that in the town, things are going to look different, you know, it's, it's already starting to look different. I'm excited, man. It is. It's just it's being good. a part of it. Well, thank you for coming and being on the show. Appreciate it. Nice fireside chat on a cold night. Oh, nice and warm. I just need some popcorn now. <laughs> you know, thank you, Roger, for taking time out of your busy schedule to talk about some things that's so dear to me. Um, I really love Monty. I love my district. I love people. Uh, I'm a server, you know, whether you see me in city council or you can ask my members at the church, they know I serve. I'm a hard worker. I, um, I love working with people all together because I'm a people person. So with that being the way it is, I feel that I'm at the right place, the right time, for the right moment to continue to serve. Well, I hope you do. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. And thank you for watching Community Focus, our fireside chat. Nice warm fire tonight. See you next time. Community Focus would like to thank the following underwriters for their help and support with our productions. Put your business up for everyone to see. Hometown Outdoor Advertising 288-9000. Wishbone Gifts Incorporated, corner of Walnut and Jackson Street in Muncie. Best Built Computers, 25 years experience in computer repairs. 413 South Tillotson Avenue, Suite 1.
Victor's Euros and Pancake House, 700 South Tilson Avenue. Great barbecue, dine-in, drive-through, or carry-out. Victor's has world-class Euros, and for your dining pleasure, you can have breakfast, lunch, or dinner at Victor's. 288-1777. Nine Guns, buy, sell, trade, 765-646-9000. 2213 South Scatterfield Road, Anderson, Indiana. Buy, sell, and trade pistols, handguns, rifles, shotguns. www.9guns.com In Anderson, Indiana. Crime Stoppers. Tips can pay up to $1,000. 286-4050. You don't have to give your name. McGalliard Guns and More, 800 West McGalliard, Muncie, Indiana, 765-288-GUNS. Parson Mortuary Incorporated, 801 West Adams Street, Muncie, Indiana, 765-747-1100. Muncie Sanitary District, serving Muncie since 1965. 300 North High Street, Muncie, Indiana, 765-747-4863. This show is produced by Millennium Productions Incorporated. Thanks for watching.